Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Before we get started, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to see our future videos. This video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available on Amazon right now. Hey, 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 <laughs> two, two people that really love Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. Welcome to RV Talk Radio, everyone. <laughs> and today I have David Helms. And uh, actually, we're old friends. Uh, we just haven't been connected for quite a while. And uh, before we get going, I need to remind everybody that RV Talk Radio is on Good Talk Radio, on Spreaker, on several platforms. And now we're actually transmitting live. Yes, live. <laughs> we're movie wow. stars, David. <laughs> we're live on Cutting Edge TV. And uh, all of our uh, newer episodes are up there on video on demand also. So... Uh, actually, welcome to the first live stream to Cutting Edge TV uh, for RV Talk Radio. How about that? That's fantastic. Yeah. So uh, welcome to the show. So uh, David Helm, is uh, he's got a site called RV Prepper, and he calls himself the RV Prepper. And he actually interviewed me about a year and a half ago. Yeah, it's been about that long. It's hard to believe. It's gone by quick. Yeah, so I, of course I tell him, oh, well, since you interviewed me, I'll, I'll get to you right away and we'll do an interview with you. And you, a year and a half later, here we are. So I am so sorry, but mm -hmm. I'm so glad we hooked up. Good things come to those who wait. <laughs> so uh, I got to switch some things over here real quick. Uh, one is I want to get a ticker going that people know mm -hmm. who they're talking to. And I also want to keep an eye on the comments. So I don't I don't usually run RV Talk Radio this earlier. So we get some... Um, some visitors, it will be just a privilege. Sure. So, first of all, David, where are you? Well, right now I'm in uh, beautiful Missoula, Montana. It's where our sticks and bricks domicile is. And uh, we enjoy it here. Matter of fact, the house we live in is the house that my wife's father built. And uh, it's nice that we have it. And it is it is absolutely wonderful. So, it, it, we, we just love Missoula. So, Yeah. So, how long have you been there? We've been here three years. The house has been here since 52, but we've been here three years and um, we both had corporate jobs and we lived in different cities and stuff. And we had moved here from uh, Maple Grove, Minnesota. Yeah, for sure. Don't you know? A little <laughs> bit of Ludafisk if you like it. I don't. Uh, but uh, no, I've, I've lived everywhere from South Carolina to Florida to Georgia to Tennessee to the People's Republic of Illinois. And then back out to Minnesota, then out here to Montana. And Montana is where I was always supposed to be. <laughs> and uh, I kind of, I know uh, David and I are very like-minded, so it should be a very enjoyable show. <laughs> oh, it's going to be twisted, folks. And this show is brought to you by Ranger <laughs> Rob Poopy Bags because this guy turned me on to these things last year. Let me tell you, they are the best freaking things that were ever invented because if you have dogs, two or three or whatever, this makes it easy. You don't have any little breakthrough accidents with them because they're tough as nails. So what kind of dogs do you have? Well, now we're just down to one. We have a little Shorky, and she should be called Buzzsaw. It's a half Shih Tzu, half Yorkie. And before that, we, you know, we've had her for 12 years now. Wow. But it's been, you know, we had a Scotty, two Scotties in the last five years. And unfortunately, they had to leave us. You know, they crossed the Ringbro Bridge there. And um, this will probably be... I don't want to say that. I don't think it'll be the last. Yeah, you know, I keep telling everybody it's going to be the last one, but I don't no, know. I, I, uh, um, I thought we, I thought I'd never get two dogs again. Um, but sure and heck, uh, it's like I've always wanted a German Shepherd. We got Cinder already. You've always seen her on a lot of oh, our yeah. videos. And uh, so we were kind of like, I don't know if Cinder's going to like another dog around. Well, it turned out really well. It's the best thing I ever did to her. She's lost 12 pounds because of the puppy. <laughs> really? Yes, well, well, I they got five what, acres to play too. So, when I was watching your uh, video the other day, where the two dogs are ready to go out and everything else, and you open that door, I'm like, "Man, she's moving faster than I remember." Oh so, yeah, yeah. 
I mean, a swimming pool was great in Phoenix for, but um, five acres is much better for puppies. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Trying like to take my some eight-year-old puppy it. again. So, yeah, it's been great. So, wow. so the big thing that you and I have really been uh, involved in in our lifetimes is RVing yep. and prepping. And we're going to talk about both. So okay. I'm going to start off with RVing because it's obviously this is RV Talk Radio. Hallelujah. And uh, what kind of what kind of rig do you have nowadays? Well, currently we we have a fifth wheel. We went with a uh, a new fifth wheel this past year. We bought something new after being in a bus for 16 years. Wow! And we thought about restoring the bus. And I started adding wow. up the numbers, and Rhonda and I looked at each other and said, "Hmm." She goes, "I would really rather a fifth wheel." And everybody's going to say, why don't you go from a class A diesel pusher to a fifth wheel? Well, hang on. I'll tell you in a minute. And uh, she was always intimidated sitting that far up off the road and driving it. And, of course, it's like a big wind sail. So we bit the bullet and bought the fifth wheel. And I'll tell you what, I don't I don't think I'll ever go back to a class A diesel pusher. It's well, uh, I, agree. I had one, too. And uh, as something, well, one is. A class A typically always seems to have the same floor plan, even though they try hard not to. Yeah. But when you get in the fifth wheels, each one's an adventure. I yep. mean, you know, I mean, they can literally look different, and uh, and they do feel more like a house. Sure, I mean, we lost some of the underbelly storage. Okay, mm -hmm. but we bought a bunkhouse because we got grandsons that live down in Florida, and we plan on traveling down there to see them, and hopefully yeah. them up here. But uh, you know, we really didn't lose any storage space, which is really kind of wild. Yeah. But I, I took about, I don't know, several thousand pounds of crap off that bus <laughs> and they didn't go back on the fifth wheel. So. Yes. It's amazing how that happens. I've had the same thing. We, we had a 40 foot uh, diesel pusher for a while. And mm -hmm. uh, when we moved it out and took stuff out of it, it's like, I can't believe we had all this stuff in there. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a religious moment, you know? <laughs> Like the second coming in the tonnage. It's, yeah. um, I mean, it was humbling how much stuff I had on there. Things I had not seen in years. Yeah. So, yeah. I totally understand. Now, do you, um, uh, how do you like to use your RV nowadays? Every day I can. Uh, we, we used it as a, as a home base for a summer job this past year to help supplement our income since we're retired old folk. And, um, we used it 26 weeks last year by working out in a remote area for the a project for the state of Montana. And it was, it was a wonderful thing to use, a uh, very comfortable and it's, it's um, very convenient. Now the, since we bought the RV, it's been from Minnesota to, to of course back out here to Montana. That's the longest trip we've taken in it so far, but it's been all over Montana, and North Dakota quite you a bit. You haven't taken it down to Florida? No, we were getting ready to take that trip. And I'm glad you asked that because when this virus thing broke out, we were getting ready to take that and go down to see the grandkids and stuff. And we were going to be gone for a couple of months. And then that hit and everything stopped. And I started having a lot of conversations with a lot of people that were full timers. And everybody was losing their ability to stay someplace. Yeah. And they were like, no, man, you got to get out. I was like, you got to be kidding me. And the, our, everything started closing down. All my reservations started getting canceled. And everybody refunded their money. Very good, except for one. Mm -hmm. And that's down in the Jacksonville, Florida area that was run through the city of Jacksonville. Oh, and it course. took them four and a half months to refund my money. Well, you know, they needed to use it for a while. Oh, well, they did. <laughs> I'm glad they did. But hey, at least I got it refunded. And I didn't yeah. lose any money on the deal. I just lost a lot of memories. And, and you just can't get those back. And everybody has struggled with this thing. And it's it's really been a blessing to have that to go and escape to because yes. when we weren't, when we weren't at the station working, we were also at different places around the area. We could socially distance from everybody, have a good time. And we yeah. got to test a lot of our preps doing that too. Have you uh, ever full times or do you do like extended times with your RV? Now with the fifth wheel, I have not full time. I full time for a while when I was living in Illinois because Rhonda was still living in Minnesota at the time. And we were thinking about moving to Illinois and then I took the early retirement and didn't do that. So I lived in it for about, I don't know, almost a year. And it uh, it was okay. And that was in the diesel pusher. But uh, it's you got to learn how to be very efficient. And, and it was an easy transition for me because I went from large boats to RVs. Same here. So, you know, it's it, 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 
it was an easy transition for me. You learn how to conserve water if you're not on any type of water supply. And you also conserve on how you use the bathroom in different ways. So, yeah, I'm going to know here from John, uh, John um, McVie. I think I said it right. Uh, it says, What's up with the future of, and I think he meant RV. Um, or I'm not sure what RA, um, anyway, but um, yeah, uh, you and I will probably touch base a lot on the future of RVing. Oh, uh, this pandemic issue um, has been really a, a challenge for folks. I know that. And have you had any uh, unusual circumstances with that yet? As far as the RVs and, and, and uh, the going out with your RVs and camping yeah, and having trouble with the, uh, the you, CV problem? You, you, you cannot get a campground well, you couldn't get a campground anywhere here in the state period you find a place that you knew you were safe and pull off the side of the road and camp in an open area you were good but if you wanted a reservation for a campground here wasn't going to happen and uh with the ones that stayed open now montana for the most part stayed open as did you know koa campgrounds of america kept almost all of theirs open unless they were absolutely forced to close them and my hat's yeah. off to them and yeah. uh but uh, we stayed at a, uh, a KOA in, gee whiz, where was that? Bismarck, North Dakota. Yeah, for sure. Our daughter got married in May. And we also stayed at a KOA in Miles City, Montana. A uh, nice little place in the middle of the, the downtown area. It was just clean as a whistle. And But we've stayed in quite a bit. But in Montana, you couldn't get any place because everybody was coming to Montana. Well, yeah, because it was a little, a little bit of, um, more freedom up there. You know, one of the things I really like about living in Montana, but besides all the vistas and the views and everything, is the lack of people. In my older age, I've gotten a little grumpy, a little set in my way. Can you imagine that? <laughs> uh, only 1.1 million people is the population here. And, well, I'm sure that's going up with everybody that from the, the coastal places that are buying places out here, driven prices up crazy. But uh, it, it was nice. And I, I came from... You know, gee whiz, when you live in the Atlanta metropolitan area, you're about, what, five and a half, six million. Florida was always crowded. So, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. I know uh, before things happened with Sherry and I, we were actually um, we we're actually starting to research Idaho. And uh, so it wasn't until, um, uh, you know, we had a crisis here that we ended up back in Central Oregon, which we lived here before. But uh, the lack of people is pretty darn nice. But unfortunately, we're influenced by the Portland area. So uh, mm -hmm. their views aren't quite the same views over here on the other side of the mountains. <laughs> no, that happens, doesn't it? Yeah. So we had this uh, same problem in Washington. You, you hit those mountains and it's like a different world. Uh, as soon as you come over to the east side, it's all red. <laughs> you go yeah. over to the other side towards Seattle, it's all blue. <laughs> it's, you know, it's really a shame that it's that way. And for the most part, the people with RVs that I've been out and about and everything else, uh, we really don't get into it too much. I mean, some people will state their views and you state your view back and be nice about it. Yeah. But there's a, there's one RV park that we stayed at this fall here in Montana. We've stayed at it several times. I don't know if I can mention the name of it or not, okay. but uh, it's the Nugget RV uh, park. It's uh, up in the St. Regis, Montana area. It is absolutely one of the nicest parks I've stayed in the United States, period. Are and the people are wonderful. Are you familiar with the uh, West Yellowstone, Montana? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, John, uh, this gentleman here for Say What You Will Radio is a uh, John's a um, does shows for our platforms and a super neat guy. So, um, mm -hmm. so John, will you get a chance in your comments? Have you ever RV'd or are you an RVer? Or uh, he's down in Phoenix, amazing man, but I'm not sure if he's RV'd or maybe he has a little bit or has been thinking about it, but, uh, he would enjoy it. I know he would. Yeah. The Yellowstone area on season and everything. And I saw the gentleman was talking about it was packed. It is always packed. And the same thing with Glacier National Park up here. Yeah, if you want a reservation yeah. at Glacier to come stay, you better make it for like 2022. Wow. It's, <laughs> and, and you know, 20, 2020 was a disaster because they closed everything up there. So yeah. it's so it's um, insane. Since you got a fifth wheel, uh, did you have to get a new truck? Of course. And what kind did you get? Well, you know, <clears throat> I bought a Chevrolet, and and here's the reason why. Uh, my last two previous trucks before were Chevrolets, and I bought them under the Costco. Well, that's not true. The first one I bought because it was under the 
General Motors vendor program where since the company I worked for was the major coating supplier and uh, we were able to get it at, at, a, at a very unbelievable price. We had mm -hmm. it for years, put 250,000 miles on it. It was bulletproof. And I went to a newer truck and uh, it wasn't big enough to pull a fifth wheel. So I had to go to a bigger one. But mm -hmm. I bought that second truck through the Costco purchase program. And I bought this third one that way. And the way it hit and everything else, it saved me about 9,000 bucks. Wow. So, oh yeah. Wow. I was right. And so, it was right. What time model, to do it. What model of truck is it now? I got the uh, Chevy Duramax 3500 HD and it, uh, it, it pulls our rig like it's, it's, you can feel it back there a little bit, but not by much. And it's uh, is, long is it wheel a long wheelbase. Four-wheel four -wheel drive. Four-wheel drive. So that's a very interesting subject. I don't know if you know this or not, but you've probably seen it on my rig. In fact, you can kind of see it behind oh, me. Oh, I can see it real good. Yeah. Um, it's a, a 2002 um, Ford uh, one-ton dually. Mm -hmm. And it's got the 7.3 engine, the last. The last, oh, the last good one. Yep. So what's interesting is it's only two-wheel drive. And the yeah. reason I went with two-wheel drive, people don't know this, but if you have four-wheel drive, you lose 5,000 pounds of tongue weight. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, our we use a 3625 RV there, which is behind me. And uh, it's about 18,000 pounds. And so the max, if I didn't have, if I had four-wheel drive, I would only be able to handle 15,000. Yeah of the Fords. And I don't know if that's changed at all, but some reason yeah, having four wheel drive does not gain you more towing capacity. No, it doesn't. It's, it's surely for the winter passes that you have mm -hmm. out here for going over, yeah. if you're going to go RV down South or whatever. So it's, yeah. uh, How, however, I will mention a two wheel drive dually <laughs> one ton with diesel in it. Mm hmm is the worst thing you could take out in the snow. Do not ever. I, this, <laughs> that truck does leave the property when it snows. Yeah. Because all it is is a giant sled. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's got so much torque in that rear end. And mm -hmm. you, you barely touch the throttle. And it's kind of like, okay, let's break loose. Let's break loose. Exactly. And when you start sliding, you've got all that weight in the front. And it, it just pulls you down hills. <laughs> you just kind of let go and just wait. Yeah. And you try to stop it like Fred Flintstone. Oh yeah, yeah it just don't happen. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, uh, I would much rather take my uh, Mazda three little mm -hmm. front wheel drive in the snow with studs any day over my truck, and that's sad. Yeah, we went down to one vehicle this year, which is the truck. Wow. And and we 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 enjoy it. So, yeah, John know, says he'd like to become an RVer. He'd be a yeah, good RVer. He'd enjoy it. Go. I have to get him to come up and visit us, and he can stay in our fifth wheel, and he'll be hooked. Oh, I see. There you go. You know, I enjoyed living full time in the fifth wheel and Rhonda would come over every other week because uh, her work was over in, in Minnesota and she would be able to work remote with me and it makes a difference. And we, we don't want to go full time out right now because of when well, we got this house, it doesn't cost us that much and it's, yep. and it's a nice place to be. And at, with what the full timers went through with this whole pandemic deal, um, uh, you know, it's nice to have a base, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And we've got a, a family cabin we have for another location we can go to if we need to. Nice. So um, what are some of the uh, RV channels you like to follow? You know, I look at almost 25 different channels on YouTube and watch them. Uh, the uh, Long Long Honeymoon crew, they they do a pretty good job with their Airstream. They seem like yep. nice people. Yeah. And I mean, I watched uh, the RV miles a little bit now. Now they went from a podcast to a podcast with video type thing, mm -hmm. and they they've been doing pretty good. They've been through some adversity with health, and my hats off to them because I I don't know if I could still put one foot in front of the other after what they went through. God love them. But I watched so many of them. I kind of hard. It's kind of hard to keep them all straight. Yeah, so, I know. <laughs> and, and 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 I'm not, not going to slam anybody because a lot of these people are out full time doing these these shows. This is how they're making their living to be able to go out and do this. And it just, I don't know, sometimes it takes 10, 15 minutes into watching a video before you get to the meat and potatoes. So, Yeah, that's the thing I've noticed is those that go out there that are trying to make YouTube their bread and butter. And and some of them have, have kind of broke that that glass ceiling and, and, mm -hmm. and they, uh, can actually make pretty good monies. Then they get so much into their channels, it's like, 
they got to be the most irritating people. Like I don't remember some of the names of them, but they're the kind of people that would pull into a campground, cameras everywhere, and then the first thing they do is launch a drone. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's like that's not my idea of camping. <laughs> it's like it's like being down the trap range, pull, and you know. But it, I I haven't experienced any of them coming in and doing that yet. We were at uh, we were at Nugget RV when some of them came in. This one group did, and I'm not going to mention them because they just weren't very friendly, and they uh, they didn't set up any of the cameras and everything else until like the second day, and. Uh, yeah, but they they weren't obnoxious. They were doing their thing. Now, I'm, I just want to say this for a second. Glasgow, Scotland. Hi, laddie. How you doing over there? <laughs> Thomas is uh, follows a lot of our shows, and a super nice guy. And uh, uh, yeah, he definitely likes the subjects we talk about. Well, I tell you what, Scotland is in my heritage, and uh, my mother was a genealogist, and she has us down all the way back to the uh, father of. Uh, the, the excuse me the grandfather of robert the bruce so it's kind of interesting so hey that's just great i've been wanting to take rondo over there for a highland tour but we'll have to get all the the covid stuff i would stuff. love to see scotland that oh, would be so awesome it is gorgeous so sorry anyway i got off but uh but yeah you know folks if if you're thinking about doing a youtube channel hats off to you it's going to be some of the hardest work you've ever done i don't run one i started to do one rob's doing one you know, I'll be more than happy to help Rob out and do things with him and stuff. It's a full-time job and three more after that. So for every, yeah, for every I, I actually did something that was amazing that I've never done before, but I did daily videos for over two months. Wow. For for uh, Ranger Rob Country Living. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that is a lot. Uh, that's hard to do. <laughs> and yeah. uh, it did great. I mean, it really helped our channel. Um mm -hmm. and um but after a while, I was like, I can't do this. You know, I just cannot do a, a vlog uh, every day um, work. with all the things I've got to do. And uh, so uh, I, I still manage to get quite a few videos out, but I'm not doing the daily anymore. And uh, yeah, I would suggest anybody wants the full time and wants to do something like that. <laughs> uh, we you just need to go see the sites you want to see for the first year. Go see them all and then decide how you want to do your program after that. And with that, you'll become so valuable to everybody. So definitely. Um, yeah. Jack just uh, from California area just joined us. Uh, Thomas, um, Thomas hops onto a lot of my shows. And, um, to, uh, so I don't know how much RVing people do in Scotland because uh, roads and terrain are a little different. Um but anyway, uh, uh, this is a channel. This is a particular show that I do. It's called RV Talk Radio. And actually, just for some history, RV Talk Radio has been around for like over three and a half years. And it's actually one of our top podcasts. However, uh, because I haven't been RVing as much, I just kind of wait for more stories to come along before I do another show where I used to do weekly. And so since we're on this subject, I actually have talked to uh, David here to ask him if he would help participate in uh, rejuvenating um, RV Talk Radio. And it would be nice to start considering doing a weekly show again. And between his connections and uh, uh, my resources and, and, and we are like-minded in a lot of things, you'll find out we're going to switch subjects here pretty soon. I think it would be a fascinating show again. And so we're looking forward to that. I know we have a very large following. And so, and then there'll be folks that'll probably come back again because we just haven't been getting the content out. And so uh, early stages, uh, David and I both have been kind of going, Hey, let's try to get this going again. And, you know, um, uh, Anyway, I, I think it would be a great wow. idea. And so I'm going to teaming up and having someone help me is really uh, one is learning how to ask for help. <laughs> That's the first thing Two wow. is start working together. This is our first time to do something together. And we're actually kind of in the same regions together. We are in the Pacific Northwest, I call it, even though you're farther from the Pacific than I am. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but anyway, yeah, so we're hoping in the future we'll have a lot more shows coming up. So that kind of answers that question. That's it, boys. Um, That's it. Uh, Howard, let's see what we got. Yeah, general, another gentleman here. Howard, uh, when are you going to do more podcasts? <laughs> like listening to them. So 
there you go. So, Howard, we just mentioned mentioned a, uh, a couple of minutes ago that we're actually rejuvenating RV Talk Radio, and David's here to help me do that. Uh, just because I've been spread so thin, we both are very um, enthusiastic RVers. We're probably both a little bit on this common sense side, so you might hear us say things that uh, might not go with the the ones that I don't believe that. You know, it's freedom, and you got to give up everything and be a minimalist to enjoy RVing. Um, I think uh, I have full timed, and it was wonderful. And yes, you have to be kind of a minimalist, but um, I'm still kind of old school, you know, have a job, <laughs> have a foundation, a, a, uh, having a base, especially now is critical, I think, because sometimes you just got to escape all this craziness with the pandemic and food shortages and all that stuff. Um, I never regret having a home base. And I think you're kind of the same. I don't know. How do you feel about having a home base now? I love having a home base. And I just want to jump back for a second. Howard, I saw that you're a reenactor. I love the picture. And it's kind of funny because I'm starting to do a project on following the Lewis and Clark Trail all the way through Montana. Oh, sweet. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, I'm, I'm a, I'm a history fanatic. I mean, it is what it is, you know, and, and you just think about it. And I, I, I love the outfit there and people don't realize just how, you know, RVs might be cheaper than doing reenacting sometimes. <laughs> I hear you. Like good, good for you. And you know, it'd be great to travel for reenactments with that. And, but and Howard, thank you very much for your comment. Um, you bet. um what's he say? I do Revolutionary, uh, Revolutionary War. War. Awesome. Yep. And, and yes, got, uh, had, I, know, I know RV idea. Talk Radio has been hurting. And so, uh, um, and and obviously, <laughs> one of our viewers said, said so. It was like, when are you going to start doing more podcasts? There you go. And uh, it's yeah. kind of funny is I actually do a lot of podcasts. I just haven't done a lot of RV Talk Radios. And so, and it is my favorite subject. It's just sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm re, um, replaying things in I, like, from six months ago, I forget that I already talked about something, you know, and I'm, I don't want to be so repetitive. So bringing in, bringing in some new blood would be really good. So I think we'll team up well. Yeah. So, um, uh, so you get this gorgeous truck and yeah. you get this gorgeous fifth wheel. Uh, what year is your fifth wheel? 2020. What? It's, what? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's new, 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 new. It's new, new. I've had it, uh, I've had it 15, no, 14 months now. So, wow, what size is it? It's a, uh, it's 34 feet overall length. It's, uh, you know, I'm only okay. at about so the same 11, size, a little 11, bit smaller, but 11.5, 11,500 without and, my crap on and, it. And what's the brand? It is a Grand Design 28BH. Nice. I like it. The Grand Design people have been very nice to me. We had a couple of little small things we needed some attention taken care of. And the local dealer here, Brett's uh, RV, which they've got locations everywhere out here in the West. At, uh, and they've been they've been absolutely awesome. Matter of fact, it's there right now, getting one little problem taken care of. And it's like, boom, let's do it for you. Yeah, there's always problems to work on. <laughs> My poor Montana, I need to, I, I wish I had a garage or something to put it in because I'm getting a little bit of that mm -hmm. oxidation issue. And so, uh, and have any energy to, uh, to, you know, Get it buffed out and all that stuff. I need to get that done. Oh yeah, we we rented an indoor storage facility this year. A brand new storage facility opened up, and it. Uh, I wish I'd had it for the bus all those years because it would have made a big difference. Yes. Yeah, I, I mean, I got the property. I just don't have the roof for it. Yeah. <laughs> you got a phone? Yeah, I, uh, I do have a shop, but it's not big enough to hold the fifth wheel. Jack it up, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so easily done. So. Uh, 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 getting to the bottom of the hour, I want to switch gears a little bit because your name is RV Prepper, of course, yeah. and you got a, you have a group too, right? Well, we've got a few people that are into it. It's not really a defined group at that point. It's just a lot of people follow us and, and we talk on some stuff on some Facebook things. But as a defined group, no. People get pretty uh, pretty closed up about that as far as being in groups. They don't want you messing in their, their stuff. So but, yeah. uh, we have some interesting conversations. But yeah, so uh, I did put uh, links to all your 
uh, locations uh, in the description. Thanks. And uh, so, uh, folks, if you want to find out more about David's stuff, uh, make sure and go in our description. You'll find his Facebook page, his uh, in his group, and uh, hey, oh, in your pod and your podcast. Yeah, we're we're being listened to in uh, C twenty one countries now. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, so, how long have you been doing your podcast? I've been doing the podcast. Matter of fact, you were the second person on my podcast that I interviewed really? a year and a half ago. So it's just been a short time. So we're about 16,000 subscribers and growing. Nice. So it's not doing too bad. We try to do a show once a week. The past couple of months, it hasn't been that way. We've <laughs> had a family member that has come down with this virus. Mm. And we've been making sure that we're here and available to take things to them should it be needed. And, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. And my wife's starting to do some of the podcasts with me now too. And it's always a blast to have her on. So, yeah, it's always uh, like my, I like to get my wife on, but she really hates to do that kind of stuff. But she, when she does it, she's awesome. Yeah. And uh, it really, I love it when she does the show with me. So, sure. But it's very rare. So, you ever see Sherry on a show with me? <laughs> Guys, go. praise her a lot. <laughs> yeah, go, girl. But uh, yeah, we could, we could do a, uh, a um a mixed couples uh podcast or a program here like this one day. Sure, so. sure we would like that. That would make her feel comfortable. Um yeah. even though I've been doing this for years and all that kind of stuff, but uh, I do want to switch gears a little bit into prepping. Okay. Sure. Because you are the RV prepper. Yeah, I don't so, profess to be a professional. I just like so, to go out. So there. how'd you kind of combine the two? Well, to me they kind of go hand in hand, but I, you know, my grandparents were of course, they were old enough. They went through the depression. My parents went through it and they, you know, they always canned their foods and put them up and uh, smoke cured and sugar cured, salt cured hams and different things like that. And I had to learn that at a young age. And we always in the Carolinas where I grew up at that point, we had to go and help at the grandparents farm on the weekends during the summertime. So it's something that was always inbred, you know, it's just right ingrained inside of me. And so and really, if everybody thinks about it for a minute, if if you got if you got more than seventy two hours of food in your house, you could be a prepper. Uh, but it's it's something that you really need to pay attention to. Now in the southeast, you have to worry about hurricanes, hurricanes and yeah. tornadoes, but mostly hurricanes. And you better have food. You better have water. You better have other supplies, safety supplies, and know how to use them. And the last thing is, you don't want to do this. You do not want to open that package when you need it and you've not tested it. So Rhonda and I were talking the other night after I finished a show with another group uh, last week. And a matter of fact, it was a week ago today. And I said, you know, it really feels good because we've taken the time to test everything that we have that goes in our backpack. It goes on our rig. It goes to the cabin that we know that we can rely on it and it works. And we've always preached redundancy between each other. Yep. And we, kind of, we kind of do the tridundancy if you want to add another twist to it. You usually have three different ways to be able to do the same task with different items. That way, when one breaks, not if, but when, um, you're ready to go with it. So it's kind yeah, of Yeah, we um, um, we just purchased, I don't know if you saw the video, uh, we just bought, purchased a uh, freeze dryer. Yeah, I'm jealous. And, it's all the heck. Oh, it's one of those. It's like, all right, we're doing absolutely nothing for Christmas intentionally because of the expanse. And it's something that's like, I think it'll take us over the top to be able to take us from six months to a possibly year, mm -hmm. a lot easier with food storage. Sure. And the other thing that motivated us is we have chickens now, which are just about ready to start laying eggs. Oh, yeah. And we know we're going to get inundated with eggs and I do not want to waste those. Nope. And so how do you preserve eggs? Well, we found out, you know, a couple of ways you could do it with lime. Yeah. Um, you can uh, freeze eggs, have, you know, you um, just blend them and you know, you can put six eggs in a, uh, a baggie and, and just freeze them and you can just reuse them that way. But, um, but when I started watching a couple of um, channels that are homesteaders, uh, somebody, one of them got a, uh, uh, and I've seen them before, the freeze dryer, that is truly amazing. Yes. What you can do with your food and, and, and store it. And instead of having to do so much canning, you can do still do canning, but you really just have to do the vacuum seal stuff because yep. everything's just powder. And so in some cases, you might want to just put a, um, a oxygen pack in it and then still seal it. But um, I, I mean, 
it just takes you to a whole nother level because I, uh, with prepping, you know, I do believe, and I'm, and we'll talk more about this about growing your own food and things like that. And you've seen that that's what we've been doing, but there's no way you could, you could, but, um, practice, you know, to be practical, to, to grow all the foods that you enjoy. Um, one is they may not grow in your region and two, uh, um, some of them just don't do well, you know, or you just have a bad crops. And so I do believe that pe preppers, if they can utilize their farmer's markets more and buy things in bulk, which like you get a bargain on like a case of green beans, you know, from a farmer's market. And then you come home and if you could freeze dry that or freeze them or whatever, you're just, you know, you, you're just one step ahead of everyone else. Yeah. And it's not that expensive if you just do a little bit at a time every week. And so uh, I'm just totally, I cannot wait because we will be doing videos on, because you know I like cooking. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the Ranger Rob cooking. Sure. Um, but uh, so, yeah, showing how we prep food with that thing is going to be amazing. Well, we've got uh, a couple of acquaintances that, uh, matter of fact, right after we bought the fifth wheel, we went over to Sandpoint, Idaho to a, a preppers meeting over there, preppers get together. And we uh, recorded uh, two authors. And they do quite well in the in the prepping industry. And that's Glenn Tate and Shelby Gallagher. Mm. And Shelby ended up getting one of these freeze dryers. And I don't think she had it but a month. And she got the second one. Wow. Oh, wow's right. And they crank out the stuff because, you know, they've got some kids at the house and they've got other people. And what's nice about it is you're able to make food that, that you like and it yeah. doesn't all the extra preservatives into it and everything else. And, you know, that, that that's not on our budget this year, but hopefully by the end of next year, we'll probably get one ourselves. So, yeah, it was pricey little never. Um, yeah. By the way, um, what do they call that place? Um, whoever makes those, uh, <laughs> it just went blank. The company makes Harvest those. Harvest Right. Harvest Right. Um, they have a lease payment program now. Uh, we're not doing that, but, uh, um, where you can actually just make payments to build up your numbers and then purchase it that way. So they're trying to make it as easy as possible to buy one. Oh, yeah. And and I, that's cool. And the other thing is the reason ours was a little pricey is we went with the oilless um, motor. Oh, yeah, the compressor. And yeah. if you do that, you're talking about another 800 bucks. It's $800 so, well spent. Yeah, so I think the total was like 14 if you took bought it by itself. Wow. But, but if you buy the regular motor, um, uh, it's, you can save yourself, like I said, about eight hundred dollars. A lot of maintenance. You got to keep up with it, though, or you burn it up, then you're back to square one. Yeah, but I, I just know that I don't. I'm not that enthusiastic about every. They have two different other pumps involved. You can get the one that you have to change the oil almost every time. Mm -hmm. No way would I do that. And the other one, um, the next grade up, um, you change the oil every 20 to 30 runs. Mm -hmm. And I don't really want to do that either. <laughs> so it's like, let's just spend the money and go with the oilless pump because I just know my habits. It's like, it's just with so many chores we got on the property. I don't want to sit there and be like, dang, I didn't change the oil, you know? You know, um, you know but, this whole virus thing broke out and everything else. You couldn't get anything at the stores. You couldn't get you couldn't get bread flour. You couldn't get all-purpose flour. You couldn't get yeast. A lot of the canned foods were gone. I mean, it was a run of all runs. And Costco, screw it, they were empty. Um, oh, it was terrible. But what we we had, we had all that stuff here at the house, and the toilet paper runs. Uh, you know, we just sat back and laughed about that. So now we, we. Weren't, weren't hoarding toilet paper for the sake of that. For mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I got it. <laughs> she's got this toy she's chewing on, but German shepherds make noises. Oh yeah, and uh, that's good. So she's being a dork. She's being a good girl, but she's making noises. It's like uh, I warned everybody at the uh, beginning of the show. I got I got my dogs in the uh, in the uh, studio. Yep, poopy bags. Poopy in bags. fact, you know what? We should do. We should, we got to do this because you're such a uh, poopy bag enthusiast. Here we go. You ready? Ready. After years of research and countless hours of R&D work, teams were assembled, research was presented, and the idea was put out to the public. If this could be done, the world would be amazed. Outdoor life would be changed forever. 
Hiking, vacation, and camping would never be the same. They got the work, they started designing, they made the product, and it's here today just for you. Yes, Ranger Rob poopy bags are finally here. They're bigger, deeper, smell like lemon, and strong. Available at Amazon at low cost and free shipping. That's awesome. They're here. They're finally here. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I know I've been holding up the box and everything. I said, Rob does not give me these. He does not pay me to do this. I'm doing this because after having pets for all these years, even from Samoids all the way down to Shorky, these things are awesome. They are bulletproof. And all I can say is I have given a lot of them out for gifts to people and they've all thanked me. They and, make a great gift. I don't know what people are thinking. You want a gift under 10 bucks? That's a perfect gift if your friend's got a dog. That could be a stocking stuffer that you stuff into the stocking. Yeah. And have stuff to stuff it into. Next time I make a run of uh, building more uh, poopy bags, I'll have to put bulletproof on it. <laughs> <laughs> So here's a, a, a question. I told you I was going to bring this question up to you. Okay. So I did a video yesterday, and it wasn't because of this show, but it got me thinking. <laughs> anyway, um, Love it. this happened. I, I got to tell my story, and, and I want people to think, first of all, the person I'm talking about is my sister-in-law, and she's a sweetheart, and she will totally understand that I'm a radio announcer and I do stuff and I talk about things out loud. And so um, don't think I'm being um, nasty to my sister-in-law when I say this, but our sister, uh, um, Ooh. <laughs> um, my sister-in-law uh, came down for, for uh, Thanksgiving and she's from Washington. And so we have, she knows I'm a prepper. First thing she said when she gets down here, can I buy a case of toilet paper from you? Because I can't get them up here in Washington. Now, she's a sweetheart. She's helped us with so much with uh, taking care of her mom and stuff like that. Of course, do not hesitate. Yes, we sent her home with a case of uh, toilet paper because we got two and a half cases in our, in our background. And by the way, we are not hoarding. Uh, we always buy like... A little bit at a time each time, just like canning jars. We got tons of canning jars, but we buy it like only a couple every week. And uh, for a while, you can buy any. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, getting back to the point, I gave away a case of toilet paper. So, of course, that week we thought, well, let's do a cost for go over and then let's go replace that case of toilet paper. No, all gone. And it's like, and so that's not a disaster if I really wanted to build those up. There is like buy marts around here that sell like the normal cases, not the big ones. Um, I could replenish that in a heartbeat, but you know, we still like to just buy the Costco big ones, you know. Sure. Anyway, so we're fine. It didn't hurt us at all, but it started making me think. <laughs> it's uh -huh. like I gave away some of my preps for family. Uh -huh. How far do you go with that if something really did happen? Sure. I mean, you know, that's a great question. And, a lot of and how far do you go with friends and neighbors and family and maybe someone um, like in our, everybody around here has got acreage and stuff, but you know, some family's hurting. Do you give up your preps? Well, there's a, there, no, no, uh, <laughs> that's not true. It, it all depends on the relationship and, and what you feel out of the kindness of your heart. Me personally, I've got a neighbor on either side of me that are absolutely fantastic. And, They've become a little bit of preppers and everything else. And the people behind me, this one uh, husband and wife with two little girls, they have a vegetable garden that's just freaking awesome, phenomenal. And they are as well. So we talk amongst ourselves. Now, if it was anything for any of those and they needed something and I had it, yeah, as long as it wasn't going to shortchange us, I would do that. Family, local here, they all know where I stand on it and I'll help whoever I can. Again, as long as it doesn't shortchange us because I've warned them all. Other people have said, well, I don't need to be a prepper. I'll just come to your house, Dave. I've heard that. And I tell them, I will shoot you as you come across the lawn. <laughs> yeah. And they think I'm joking. And then I, I don't smile. Uh, don't come to me for, you know, be your savior. First off, save yourself. Yeah. It doesn't take much to do this. Just do a few dollars each week, a couple extra cans of food. Cut it up. Rotate your stock. That's the most important thing so you don't waste anything. Exactly. I've got a funny story about the toilet paper. 
Now we were in Minnesota and we had two girls that were teenagers at the time growing up. One was getting ready to go off to college just before we moved. And uh, so I used to buy toilet paper at Costco and Rhonda and I would be at different places, different times and stop at Costco and pick up stuff. And we would, for some reason, both of us would buy a big old bag of that toilet paper, right? We had more toilet paper than Davy Crockett's got coonskins caps. So when it came time to move out here, we, we sold our stuff and gave away stuff and threw a lot of stuff away. And I was at the minimum what the moving company was going to charge us and everything else. I still had space on the truck. And I'm like, I don't want to give it away for free. So I still had you know, a couple of cases of this toilet paper. I packed it up in a moving box and moved it all the way out here. Forgot I had it. So then I put this big shed out in the backyard and I was up in the attic of the shed back, I don't know, I guess it was March of last year. And uh, Rhonda goes, what's that big box? And I opened it up. I said, it's gold. I found gold. <laughs> money off of this. We so could true. get that corner and sell it. We'd be like, hey, you need some TP? Come around the corner, you know? I had two cases of this toilet paper. And we already had a case and a half in the house. So we never we never had to do that stuff. So <laughs> Yeah, paper gold. <laughs> it was unreal. But, you know, here's my point. <laughs> um, Wild Bill, thank you so much for coming by. Uh, here's my point about the prepping. For in March, we all witnessed um, the shortages, right? And, and then, so as time went on, the stores kind of replenished a little bit, and so we all said, like, "Oh, you know, um, spaghetti's back in." So you know, instead of just buying one or two, just one, you know, I buy two more often and kind of build it up and. Uh, same thing with toilet paper. As soon as they started getting toilet paper again, it's like, oh, maybe we should get an extra case. I don't talk about hoarding, like buying 10 cases, just enough that, you know. And so uh, my my point is, is people, we were slapped upside the head of reality that we can have shortages because of, um, you know, if let's say the truckers start stop or running because of the pandemic or maybe bad weather and things like that, our stores are crippled. And so mm -hmm. it's not just maybe running out of food, which that's a whole nother issue because of processing. But the thing is we were slapped up outside the head and, and we, a lot of us woke up and said, maybe I should be a little more prepared. And some people did step up. Yep. And then there's others that still to this point didn't, you know, like, my sister-in-law, which once again is, I love her to death, and I can talk like this on my radio show because she knows me. Uh, but it's like, what were you thinking? Were you not like a reality check in March? Why didn't you build up your toilet supply? And now mm -hmm. they're in the same situation in Washington, and we got it here in Oregon, and the paper supply is going down again. Same Did here. we not learn anything, people? No. <laughs> That's my point. They did not learn at all. You know, it, it's, here's the deal. Everything in manufacturing, and I say this because we both come from manufacturing businesses, mm -hmm. is that just in time, JIT, just in time delivery of parts to be able to supply so nobody had to carry any inventory. Right. And so everybody went that way. Now, you will have at the most in an emergency to be able to resupply a grocery store if you have a distribution center somewhere close to it. Right. It will run out within that 72-hour window. If that store has a run on it, it's gone. Yep. We watched this with hurricanes and everything else in the Southeast. And we're talking places that had mega warehouses in the same town. They couldn't supply them. So when this thing hit and people panicked, they sucked the system dry. It's not yet back on its feet. And the manufacturers haven't learned that they need to build that inventory back up. And they don't seem to want to do it. They still want to do the JIT program. Yeah. And, and, you know, um, and during my aerospace days and I was a manager and all that stuff, we were taking our companies back then from having massive warehouses of parts and ours was aerospace to trying to do this just in time inventory. So they were spreading and they were spreading it. The fact of, you know, uh, the aerospace company I was with using several companies for different parts of what we built. And, um, uh, um, when one of the problem is when one of those breaks down, uh, you could shut down an entire you know, uh, production of something. Yeah. Um, and so same thing happens with food. If something goes like the processors, they literally just didn't have enough people to process. So of course all the farmers can't process their cattle and some of them had to actually 
either not sell their cattle or actually uh, euthanize them because they couldn't get rid of them and they can't afford to keep them because it costs money to feed those animals. So the whole system was messed up and it still is. And, uh, and then there's, you know, companies out there that actually want the food supply to be messed up because they're pushing for veggie burgers and, and artificial stuff. And so they want to, you know, get away because, you know, uh, cow farts are such an evil thing. And <laughs> anyway, come to my house. I just think it's important that people understand what's happening. And so, uh, uh, but they, I don't know if it's like, because they know preppers, they go, well, I know I can always go to Robin Sherry's house, you know? Mm -hmm. it's like, no, you won't. You'll find me not to be that nice guy anymore. If yeah. I have to feed my 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 wife and my dogs and stuff, I even prep for my animals. And it's like, and, and if things really come down to it, the first thing I'll say between the gate with a, hand, a gun in my hand is saying, did you not learn? Why didn't you prep? Why do you want to take my reserves? Go away. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. It's terrible. You know, and what if that's a family member? Yeah. What if it's a lady down the street that's 89 and she was not able to prep? You know, that's when you start making those exceptions. But once you do that, you got to make sure nobody knows that you did that. Mm -hmm. It's out. Everybody and his brother's coming to see you. That's a nice thing for you living out where you do. You don't have a lot of people around you. And so you're still going to have some people like that, but most yeah. of them are probably self-sufficient in your area around here. Eh, not so much. So, so we, yeah, we, um, the other thing is, uh, uh, my question to you is when you prep, are you prepping for you and your wife? Or are you prepping for you and your wife and possibly the kids? Well, since the kids, yeah, since the kids live more than a thousand miles from us to 2,500 miles away from us, I don't really prep for them. We, we have supplies here. If they're here that we can do that. Now we, we cash product at different locations. It's not all here at the house. Mm -hmm. so that way if something happens, we haven't lost everything and we have them at different places along the road on the areas that we travel. And wow. you, know, you say, well, you're taking that to the extreme. Well, you know, something not, a couple of those places I almost felt like going to to get stuff until the store started getting things. I didn't have to break into them, but it's, it's something that you have to think about. This is not going to go away. This, this, you know, this whole pandemic thing, I think this is just a start. I think there's going to be mutations from it and you're just going to have to be very careful how you do it. So. Yeah. Now, have you found knowing that, do you keep your RV, you, you don't keep your RV in the property, do you? No, I don't. But it's close by. Now, one thing I found comfortable about having my RV here is, uh, by the way, I didn't. Um, I have my own well, so I actually awesome. brought an electrician in here the other day and actually put a, a transfer switch mm -hmm. in our well, and I bought a five thousand watt um, uh, generator, so I can produce water twenty four seven as long as I have a generator, and you mm -hmm. don't have to run that generator the whole time because. There's a 50 gallon tank in the pup house. So I can make sure that's full and actually supply the house really well. But if I want to water my gardens and all that stuff and keep all that still running, I can actually hook up my um, my generator to the pump house and I literally run my full water system to, awesome. uh, to handle my plants and stuff. So it was really cool about that. But I still have this concern about heat. Um, I don't have a fireplace here and I don't have a stove and I'm thinking about doing one. But in the meantime, I was thinking, should I put a bypass system in the house? But yep. to run the heating system here, you need a really big generator. Um, cause oh, we're electric, all electric, electric heat or propane electric or, yeah. forced air oh, with, electric, a, with oh, an air yeah. pump. Yeah. So that, so I had my electrician over here cause I had to have something done. And 10, uh, kilowatt he says, you know, you're going to need one big ass, uh, heater um, generator just to mm -hmm. run your heating system. So he's like, you better go with a stove. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but getting back to RVs, the other thing is nice to know that if we were out of heat here for a while and get this house got really cold, we got the fifth wheel. <laughs> exactly. It's all gassed up. It's got plenty of propane and, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we could be quite comfortable in the evenings when it's really cold to go out to the RV and just use the heat there at the time. And, and uh, uh, be, you know, like I said, very comfortable. And, yeah, I just uh, got finished testing out one of those My Buddy, the small My Buddy 
Yeah. Oh, so yeah, you, yeah. I got one of those. Two of them, actually. It, uh, we worked it up at the cabin. It was, you know, down in 9 degrees to 15 degrees. And those things work fantastic. And we also have one of those Dyson. We don't have the big one, one of those uh, small heaters that they make. that looks like a big paper clip. You seen those? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Those are freaking awesome, and they don't draw that much. So you could have, you know, a generator. We have a transfer switch here at the house, so I can run everything in the house with the exception of the air conditioning. Yeah. Uh, anything else I can take care of because uh, we've got gas, and it, it's 110 on the mo- the blower motor, and it's not that big. And I have two wood-burning fireplaces, which is unusual for Missoula because yeah. we were able to keep it grandfathered in because the house went to a family member. Uh, and so, yeah, I can heat this house pretty cheap and everything else. And I'll keep them, all the pipes going. So there's a, there's a fireplace in the basement. There's a fireplace here on the main level. So very nice. Yeah. yeah this place, they never put a fireplace in. So I would much rather have a pellet stove in here, mm-hmm. then you but get- the problem is it requires electricity. So I've got to have some kind of backup mm-hmm. to run the pellet stove. And so, uh, cause I just don't want to deal with chopping wood. I'm just getting too old for chopping wood. And, uh, yeah, uh, you know that's the problem with aging. When you're a prepper, is also you got to talk about your realities. Like, I don't think I'd be a a bug out bag kind of person unless I really had to. Um, um, you can't carry everything you need to carry with you. I've got get home bags, is what we call them. You can call it a bug out bag. We try to keep it at 25 pounds or under, and uh, and that's where when you start having things dropped off at locations at friends or other places that you know where you can store them. You, uh, you can be easier to get to, but yeah. You know, some- one of the things I've always mentioned is like, why would you be so eager to bug out? Cause as soon as you're out in the, exposed to people mm-hmm. with a bug out bag or a pack on, all you're saying to people is shoot me. I've got a bag of treasures on my back. Yeah. There's a lot of different things you have to look at that. So. Yeah. I was like, uh, so why are you so eager to be you know bugging out? If you, I would make that your last resort before. That's, 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 that's excellent. And I had anyway, some program that's one just time. my point of view. It's just, it just seems kind of dumb to, well, let's hike down the highway with our backpacks on. Well, you know, if I'm driving down the road and this shit hit the fan, it's mm-hmm. like, let's shoot those people. Their backs are full of things we need. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's, there's, we can, we can do a whole show on those bags and we ought to do that, you know, because yeah, I agree. RVs and everything else is one thing. And we can talk about some different products because you don't have to spend a lot of money to do those either. Yeah. And the other thing I want to talk about in future shows is some people say, well, I got an RV. I'm I'm a perfect prepper. No, you're not. You take an RV and put yourself in the middle of BLM land. How mm-hmm. long will you last? That's it. You've got you know, you know, how much water do you got? How much can you hold in your tanks? And sure. then also how much gas you got? Yeah, exactly. And so I'm not just talking about the fuel tank. I'm talking about your, your heating. Sure. Um, no, that's not the ideal RV prepping uh, scenario, although it's got some benefits to it. But the bottom line, you need resources as much as anybody does. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, uh, you know, I you just can, don't call that the ultimate RV uh, prepping tool. Um, it's, trans- it's a tool. And stop. if you did it right, you could do, you know, do wonderful things with it. But, you mm-hmm. know, obviously we got the conversation of where do you get good water? How do you store your water? solar, all those kind of things. We have a lot of things to talk about. Do we ever? So it's not one and done, folks. It's easy to do. So you just, you got to, you know, Clint East would say it best in his, one of his movies. A man's got to know his limitations. So that's right. Exactly. That's, that's really big. Yeah. You know, it's oh. like prepping is going to be different for people. You and you and I at our age mm-hmm. and, uh, um, you know, and, uh, our resources and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, so much to talk about. But we're at the end of the show. Can you believe an hour went by already? Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. So, I want to um, uh, thank you very much for being on the show. I'm okay. hoping to do a lot more shows together. I hope you find uh, David as a fascinating person. Um, so, anyway, I want to thank everybody for uh, watching our show and, and visiting us and saying hello. Uh, please take the time to like, sus- uh, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. And um, uh, leave us a comment if you catch our show later. We'd love to hear from you. And hopefully we can start doing more RV Talk radio shows. So thank you very much, David. Remember Red on Fridays. Remember everyone deployed. Thank yep. you for troops. You bet you guys. So, folks, talk to you later. Bye now. Thank you very much for watching our video. 
please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.